Hi everyone, we're going to get started with lesson 113 right now for our grammar lessons for this week. As always, feel free to tune in at your own convenience. Some friends are completing all four grammar lessons at once, others are taking it day by day. Whatever works best for you is fine with me. So let's go ahead and get started. You'll need your books open to lesson 113 and a pencil, of course. Number one and two wanted us to write the concrete and abstract nouns in the correct column. So we need to remember what those two terms mean, concrete and abstract. So if a noun is concrete, it means that we are able to see it, feel it, touch it. Um, you know, it's kind of like an existing thing. Abstract is more of an idea or a feeling. It's really hard to physically see it. So concrete nouns, once you have gone through and sorted them, the things that we can see, feel, touch, and hear would be kittens, toys, paint, rubber band, and a wagon. Those things are all, um, you know, a person, place, or thing. That's what a noun is. And these are all nouns that are concrete. We can physically feel them, see them, or touch them. Abstract nouns, more of those ideas or feelings. We have wealth, you know, that is the idea of having a lot of money. Talent, dream, idea, and comfort. Those are all more ideas or feelings about something that we can't physically see, feel, or touch. All right, number three says the suffix er can also mean someone who does something, such as a teacher is someone who teaches. So what word would mean someone who paints? We would write a painter. Okay, so you see painter here, someone who paints. Um, you know, like a farmer is someone who farms, or um, a, a rancher, someone who works a ranch an actor, someone who acts. All right, number four, draw a line to match the underlined expression with its meaning. So why did Bill go and stir up that hornet's nest? Well, that doesn't sound like a good thing. That means you're, you're trying to like cause trouble, right? Stirring up a, a hornet's nest would cause some trouble for sure. You'd better not try to butter her up. Butter her up, does that mean in trouble? or to be nice to someone because you want something. I think you could see that it means to be nice to someone because you want something yourself. Butter her up. You're in hot water now, Jason teased. To be in hot water means to be in trouble. So hopefully you're not in hot water at home with your parents. She got a lot of days left to go. <laughs> all right, over to number five. Choose all of the prepositions in each sentence. Um, use the help pages to check your work. Well, if you recall from my previous lessons, when we're trying to find a preposition, um, I suggest to my students to eliminate the other options in the sentences because prepositions are kind of tricky. And so if you get rid of all of the other parts of a sentence, like get rid of the nouns, the verb, any adjectives or adverbs, um, then typically what you would be left with is the preposition. So Brianne spilled milk under the chair. Well, Brianne is our noun, our subject noun, so we'll get rid of her name. Spilled would be our action word. Milk is a noun, it's a thing. The is an article, a and the. And chair is our object noun, so what we're left with is under. That would be our preposition. Now the second sentence is a little unique because as you see from the answers, there are going to be two prepositions in the sentence. Let's see if we can eliminate down. Chloe carried the books to the top of the steps. So Chloe is a person, get rid of that noun. Carried is our verb, the action word. The, there's three thes, those are the articles in the sentence, a and the. Books are nouns. Steps are nouns. Um, the top is kind of giving us direction, telling where. Um, so that'd be an adverb. And what we're left with is to and of. Okay. 
So that sometimes helps to eliminate some other choices to find your prepositions. Number six, a pronoun renames an antecedent. Underline the pronoun and draw an arrow to its antecedent. So a pronoun takes the place of a noun, and the antecedent is simply a fancier word for saying, you know, what is the noun that the pronoun is replacing? So dad baked the cake and frosted it. It would be our pronoun. It's taking the place of, draw an arrow, to cake. So when dad frosted it, what did he frost? He frosted the cake. So the cake is the antecedent in our sentence. On number seven, we needed to add quotation marks for our dialogue. I can't believe you won the contest, cried mom. Well, remember, quotation marks go around the exact words of what our speaker is saying. And so we put quotation marks around I and after the exclamation mark. I can't believe you won the contest. That's what mom is saying. On number eight, fill in the plural possessive noun. Plural means more than one and possessive means there's ownership. So the ladies hats were all purple. So ladies, notice, is um, plural already, I-E-S. Lady is one, ladies is more than one. But we're talking about all of the ladies' hats. It's all of their hats we're talking about. So our apostrophe goes after the S on ladies. Number nine, choose the word to complete the sentence. Write it on the line. Would you prefer asparagus, blank of spinach? Um, I don't know that many would choose either of those options. I personally like both, but anyways, um, would you prefer asparagus, hundred of spinach instead of spinach or language of spinach? Well, instead is the only option that makes sense. And number 10, underlying our future tense verbs, including the helping verb. Remember, future tense means it's going to happen. It will happen. So Jack will frame the new finger paint picture. Will frame, that includes the helping verb will, telling us that this is going to happen in the future. Eleanor will go to the bike shop with Patrick. Will go, okay, she will go tells us it's going to happen in the future. All right, so that ends our first grammar lesson. If you're hanging out with me for the next one, stay put or pause the video, take a short break. Otherwise, we are going to move on to lesson 114. All right, friends, those of you tuning in, we are getting ready to start lesson 114 for today's grammar. Okay, so we take a look at number one. It says to read the underlined words, choose the word or phrase that has the stronger shade of meaning. So I expected that we would be able to get there in an hour expected. So what could we replace that with that's a little stronger? Would we say, I thought that we would get there in an hour, or I was convinced? If you were convinced, that's pretty strong, more than just you thought, like you were absolutely for sure. Number two, the root liber means free. Um, choose the meaning of the underlined word. So we've seen the word liberty when we've talked about grammar or I'm sorry, not grammar, this is grammar, when we've talked about government. Um, we are liberated from school when summer break begins. Liberated from school. So what does it mean to be liberated from school? We are freed from school, okay? Number three, drawing a line to match our expressions with the meaning. We'll be late if we don't step on it. Well, the key words in there are will be late, so that means we better hurry. I bet that car cost an arm and a leg. Well, I don't know about you, but my arm and leg are pretty expensive because I want to hang on to them. So it means to cost a lot of money. And your brother is like a bull in a china shop. Well, if you know anything about bulls, they're pretty rambunctious. They buck and they go crazy. Um, and also a china shop means there's a lot of breakable items. So if he's a bull in a china shop, it means that he's moving carelessly. 
he, you know, maybe is bumping into things and, um, you know, I'd be worried, worried things are going to get broken. Number four, underline the adverbs that compare. Tiana swims more regularly in the summer. So an adverb describes how the action is happening. So swims would be the verb in the sentence. That's what Tiana does. How does she do it? Well, she does it more regularly. So that would be our adverb. Number five, underline two action verbs. Okay, so we just were talking about verbs. Verbs show the action in the sentence, and there are two of them. So you sleep on the couch, and I will sit in the chair. What are the actions? Sleep and then sit. Those are actions. Okay, over to number six. What does the underlined word mean? He was so nervous, he stammered when he spoke. Stammered. Well, some key words in here are being nervous and speaking or past tense spoke, you know, if you're nervous and you're talking, what might happen? Well, it might mean that you stopped and repeated um, what you were saying, okay? Not cried or yelled and whispered, but you stopped and repeated. You kind of just couldn't get out the words. Number seven, choose the correct form of the ver verb using the verb see. Do you blank the goldfinch in that tree? So we would keep it present tense. Do you see the goldfinch? And then Andy blank one with its mate the other day. This is where we change it to past tense because it happened the other day. We know it's in the past. So we would have to change it to saw. This is an irregular verb. So we don't say Andy seed one with its mate. We change the verb to saw. Number eight, adding our suffix er. So something that rocks is a rocker. Like a rocking chair is a rocker. And something that glides, we add the er suffix to make glider. Glider and rocker. Number nine, we have to choose the best subordinating conjunction. Um, that's kind of a big grammar term there, subordinating conjunction. Basically, it's helping to link parts of our sentence together. It was totally quiet, blank the wolf howled, until, if, or because, we're going to say until the wolf howled. And you must practice an hour every day. Your concert is next month. We're going to say because your concert is next month. This is a little cause and effect sentence. And finally, number 10, reading the words. We need to draw a line to separate our word into syllables um, between the long vowel sound and the consonant in the VCV pattern. So listen for the long vowel sounds. So we have the word broken. You hear the long O, broken. So we split the syllable between the O and the K. Basic. You hear the long A. Basic. So we split between the A and the S. Vocal. Vocal. Long O. We split between the O and the C. And native. Native. We split between the A and the T. So that ends our second grammar lesson for the week. Stay put and we'll be moving on to our third lesson. All right, guys, so if you're tuning in, getting ready to start lesson 115 for grammar. Let me tell you, I'm getting really good at writing some things backwards. All right, lesson 115, here we go. All right, number one, choose the word that means put things in order and then use it in a sentence. So out of answer, arrange, and explain, Arrange means to put things in order. And their example sentence said, she will arrange the books by title. She will arrange the books by title. Um, let me see here if I can give a sentence. I will arrange my Legos by colors. So I will put my Legos in order by colors. I know some people do that. Helps you find what you're looking for. So just double check your sentence. 
using the word arrange. Number two, label each noun S for singular or P for plural. So singular means only one of something and P plural means there's more than one. So hooves, if you're talking about the hooves of a cow, that's plural, more than one. And typically we know it's plural because it ends with the S. Wing, if a bird hurt its wing, wing would be singular meaning only one. Duck, you saw a duck swimming in the pond, duck is singular, only one. And snails, if you had several snails in your fish tank, that means more than one, so plural. All right, number three, writing a C if, it is, if the word is a concrete noun or A if it's an abstract noun. I ran to get my backpack for school. So backpack, is it a, a noun that you can see, feel, touch, hold? Yes, so we would say C for concrete. I was late because I couldn't go to sleep. Now, that's kind of tricky because sleep, you know, you can see when someone is sleeping, but you can't see sleep by itself. You can only see what it looks like. So this would be an abstract noun. It's more, um, you know, more abstract. Number four, in, im, and dis are three prefixes that mean not. So they wanted us to match the word to its meaning. So if something is invalid, it means not valid. In means not. And you take the main word valid, so invalid means not valid. Impolite. Impolite means you're not being polite, not polite. And dis, like disrespect, means not showing respect. Okay, so when we add prefixes on the words, it does change the meaning of those words. Number five, circle the noun that is the subject of the sentence, underline the noun that is the object. Renee tells jokes. So the subject of our sentence tells us who or what the sentence is about. So this sentence is about Renee, that's our subject. And our object is a noun that we find in the predicate of our sentence jokes. Tells is a verb. That's the action in the sentence. Okay, and number six, underline the adverb that tells where. Catch the fairy here. Where would we catch it? Where do we catch the fairy? Here. So here is the adverb telling us where. Okay, moving on, number seven on the next page. Choose the best subordinating conjunction from the word box to complete the sentence. We have because, unless, which, and when. Bundle up to go outside, blank, you would rather stay indoors. Bundle up to go outside because you would rather stay indoors, unless you would rather stay indoors, which you would st rather stay indoors, or when. Um, unless it's in there. Haley won all the awards, which made her very happy. There you go. All right, sentence is complete. Number eight, choose the words that match the underlined word in the sentence. Pay attention, choose the word, so there should be more than one. Examine the evidence and you'll see a pattern, said the detective. Examine, what does examine mean? Some clue words, you know, evidence, Detective, does it mean to overlook it, to kind of not pay attention to it? Investigate, inspect, or just to glance at? Well, you can see our two answers here in the middle. Examine means to investigate or inspect, meaning looking closely. Number nine, choose the word to complete the sentence. Miss Collins can speak a blank in addition to English. So keywords here, you're speaking something. English is a type of language, so she can speak a language in addition to English. So maybe she can speak German or French or Spanish. And lastly, number 10, choose the strongest adjective to complete the sentence. We began to devour the blank pizza before the waiter had walked away. Tasty, good, or delicious? Yeah, good pizza, tasty pizza, 
delicious pizza. That is the strongest verb. All right, guys, we are cruising through these lessons. A lot of these lessons are utilizing skills that we've been practicing all year. So hopefully grammar is not um, you know, an area where you are struggling with. I know there might be a few skills that you still feel a little um, tripped up on, but check out Brain Pop. They have some really excellent videos for grammar skills. Um, or just continue to tune back in with me and hopefully some of my little explanations can help um, make some better sense of things for you. Up next, we are going to look at lesson 116. Uh-oh, I don't think I wrote it correctly this time. No, I was doing it too quick. Let me go back. Does this work? Oh, there we go. Lesson 116 is up next for grammar. Last lesson of the week, and then you can check grammar off your list. So lesson 116. All right, let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, so place a check check mark next to the prefixes that mean not. We looked at some of these prefixes in the last lesson. Un, like if you are unavailable, you are not available, so that means not. Im, if something is impossible, it's not possible, so that means not. Pre, preheat, does that mean to not heat the oven? No, it means to heat it before. Dis, if you are disrespectful, it means not respectful, so dis means not. Re, like if you replay the movie, does that mean to not play it? No, it means to play it again. How about in, incorrect? That means to be not correct. So those four prefixes mean not. Number two, choosing all of the prepositions in each sentence. So let's go through and see if we can cross off some of the other words that we know um, and see what we're left with. We stopped by the gym and watched the basketball game. We is a pronoun. Stopped is our verb. The is an article. Gym is a noun. And is a conjunction. Watched is another verb. The is an article. And then basketball game, basketball is an adjective describing what kind of game. So we're left with by, there's our preposition. Ellis can sit beside Elijah during art class. Ellis is a person, so that's a proper noun. Can sit is our verb with a helping verb. Elijah is our proper noun, a person. Art class. Art is an adjective describing what kind of class. So we're left with beside and during. We have two prepositions. Zach received a letter from the mayor. Zach is a proper noun. Received is the verb. A is an article. Letter is a thing, a noun. The is an article. Mayor would be our object noun. And we're left with from. So from is our preposition. Hopefully crossing off the other words in the sentence um, has helped you locate the prepositions. Number three, underlining each verb and then choosing if it's past, present, or future. Brooks will poke at the flowers in the vase. Will poke is what Brooks is going to do. That's the action. And if he will poke, that means it's in the future. He hasn't done it yet. I competed in the tennis tournament last summer. What did I do? Competed, that is our verb, the action in the sentence. If you competed and it was last summer, those are clues telling you this is in the past tense. Addison skips rocks in the pond. What does Addison do? She skips, specifically she's skipping rocks, not herself, but anyway, skips means it's happening now in the present. Number four, underline the helping verb and the main verb. You are invited to a party for Isabel at 2 o'clock p.m. on Saturday. 
Helping verb is are. Main verb is invited. Are invited. Number five, adding the prefix non to the word and um, telling what the meaning of the word now is. So non plus fat, we get non-fat. That was a spelling word before. And non-fat means it doesn't have any fat or without fat because non means not. So maybe you have um, non-fat milk or um, non-fat yogurt. Oftentimes we see that word associated with food. All right, last page, number six, choose the meaning of the underlined word um, based on the sentence. The root is reg. So the regulation said that the swimmers could not run around the pool. So we see the root word here is reg. What do you think regulations mean? Could not run around the pool. Keywords there. Do you think regulations are the announcement said, the rules said, or the lifeguard said? Regulations are rules that you follow. All right, number seven, a pronoun renames an antecedent. Circle the pronoun and draw an arrow to its antecedent. So Tasha picked out the gift and paid for it. So what is our pronoun? Pronoun is replacing the name of a noun, it. So words like it and he, she, I, us, they, we, them, those are all pronouns. And when we say it, what are we talking about? Tasha picked out the gift and paid for the gift. So instead of saying the gift again, which is our antecedent, we replaced it with the pronoun it. All right, number eight, read the underlined word and choose a word or phrase with a stronger shade of meaning. Mark believed he would not be late for dinner. So believed, he was positive or he thought. When you think something, that's, you know, okay. But if you are positive, that means you are absolutely sure. So that would be a stronger shade of meaning for that word. Number nine says a complex sentence has more than one complete thought. For example, Polly waited until the puppies woke up. Okay, so they want us to underline the two ideas in this sentence. So like here in the example, Polly waited is one example of a, a thought and then the puppies waking up is another complete thought. So Albert can ride his bike when he wears a helmet. So Albert can ride his bike, he wears a helmet, um, and then the word here in the middle is kind of joining those two thoughts together. Not quite a compound sentence, um, but the same type of idea. And number 10, choosing the word that means to give a reply. So answer, arrange, or explain. So when you give a reply, you are giving an answer. And their example was, my answer was correct. So I might say, her answer was fascinating, for my example. Okay? All right, guys. I hope this grammar video for the week helped you out. If you um, finished up with this lesson, then you can check grammar off your list. Just make sure to submit um, your work to your teacher. And best of luck with the rest of your work for this week. Thank you.